Damn. Yurt. That's that's so New York. When I when I open the gallery, I put a big yurt across the window, like a vinyl, because I was like, you know, to sort of like uh, announce the sort of that something was happening here, you know. Actually, I put it, I put that on there, and then it had a little QR code that went to the Instagram, and I put "Say It Back" underneath, you know in order to get people to sort of start adding the gallery in that way or whatever. So, yeah, I guess that's what, that's my that's that's a, my New York thing, you know. My name is Graham Wilson and you're watching Emerging NYC. I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky, which is in the south for people who don't know that. And uh I moved to New York almost 15 years ago now and um, my journey to New York was one that I didn't know what I was going to do but I knew I was in a lot of trouble where I was from and I needed to uh, go somewhere else and um, so I came to New York uh, straight to Bed-Stuy, $300 in one suitcase and a small room and I started working just odd jobs. With my move to New York, I started becoming interested in the arts, you know, in the South, much like, you know, in places like here, Bed-Stuy, or wherever you want to say that where you grow up, art is not a prevalent thing that you have sort of access to and whatnot. So like my move to New York initiated sort of my interest in art and books and culture and things that were not sort of uh, hip where I came from. I did not know that I wanted to open an art gallery. I myself was an artist for some years and I had quite a bit of success myself as an artist in the way that I would say that I got to travel and do exhibitions all over the world, which mostly before I came to New York, I, went from Kentucky to New York. That was such a, a, a wave of exposure for me over those five years of doing my, my exhibitions that I thought that, that that was so such an impactful time in my life. And I think that my sort of, I felt like my art practice sort of stopped being a, a great use of all of my skills and in a way. And, and I think through that exposure, I sort of wanted to try to open that door for other people that they would have that sort of situation in their life, you know, in that way. So that was sort of my, that was my beginning as a gallerist, but it didn't really, it didn't, it didn't, I never sat down and said, wow, I want to open a gallery, you know? I just thought, you know, there's sort of a need for like platforms for younger people and for, you know, people that might be overlooked and, those different things that I could provide that platform and I worked also in the back end of art since I was in my early 20s and so I sort of like produced everything for everybody else in that way that you know I knew everything that there was to know about that. So the name Swivel came from uh, the the reference of like head on a swivel, which you know means to like be alert and like watch your surroundings. A swivel is also a mechanically a rotating object, which like a gallery is likewise a rotating object in the way that it always changes monthly or or what have you. So, and the sign is basically. It goes hand in hand with the name and the way that the, on the logo it's a little head on the dot of the eye. And so the sign outside is like, a, it's the heads but they're turning, you know. And they're my, I call them the block watchers, the, my, my little alien people out there. This is Joseph Cochran's exhibition. Uh, a lot of things have changed, a lot of things have not. The exhibition is basically set up in this sort of, what's supposed to give as a narrative journey of sort of Joseph's last eight years of his life, um, where he went from his 
home of Brownsville to all of a sudden moving to Hong Kong, to move into Africa, to move into rural parts of Italy, to move into Belgium, um, and then back to New York is the second half of the exhibition, which is basically just this wonderful journey of sort of jo Joseph's coming of age in a way. And he just has such a way of sort of capturing a moment that sort of feels as though it's like you were there or it's your moment or you're watching whatever's happening. And I think that his photography is sort of like, uh, has this sort of deja vu effect where you, you, you think that it's, it happened to you in this way. Um, and that's my sort of my favorite aspect of Joe's work is, is that it, it really sort of, you, you almost look at his photos and you try to remember what, if you were there or not, you know. I have always loved this neighborhood and I think that there's like an influx of people that and things that are happening that are going in a really great direction and I wanted to sort of continue that conversation. I'm gonna have a gallery in bed and I'm gonna make it viable and I don't have to go to Chelsea, I don't have to go to the Lower East Side, like I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna do it well and you're gonna come here and that was sort of part of the situation and that I wanted to also just keep the keep the monetary situation in the place that I live and that if I was going to be yielding money and and be successful at some point then that it should be here amongst people that will benefit off of that you know rather than amongst a situation or a neighborhood that doesn't really need that you know that was my <clears throat> motivation for keeping the gallery here you know and also I just never really felt like it was a place like me and my friends always felt like so awkward there we were just like even if it was my opening my shit I would be like like I'd be like sorry guys like I know you don't want to be here like thanks for pulling up you know whatever this and that you know for but it wasn't a situation where like my friends or or my group of people felt like comfortable in you know and uh, so I sort of also wanted to try to change that situation of of not of it of people feeling like hey I can go there and like like I feel fine you know like it's a I don't feel like awkward or like I shouldn't be here or like whatever or I'm out of place or this or that so that was another sort of combined experience that led into the decision of opening the gallery here. I didn't know when I was gonna do it if it would be appreciated or not. I didn't know. I expected to have a lot of kickback. I expected for people to say, oh, fuck that. You know, no, we don't fuck with that or whatever. But the general conversation is that people are very excited about the gallery and like that was even unexpected for me. And that sort of people, you know, they, um, people have really gravitated to the gallery. And I say like, you know, part of like, being in the hood and like especially if you're older or whatever like a lot of like your life you, or a lot of the time you don't leave like you know a 10 square block radius so even sort of just having something new every month that's like right around the corner for people they're like it's entertaining and it's like something that gives them like something that you know to look to look at on their day to day or think about or whatever and I mean it's not changing the world by any means but it's some small, small microcosm that provokes something you know in people which has been obviously a rewarding aspect of the gallery as well you know and there's been a, a wave of sort of young gallerists and young people sort of trying to take the reins on a situation you know and that those people are this sort of those people saying that well this is sort of our thing and so like we don't we're not gonna sell you our thing. We're just gonna do the our thing ourselves, you know? And that's sort of a big situation of my, you know, of what I'm influenced by and like what I'm trying to be a part of as well is that like, you know, instead of like selling our thing to a bigger buyer, we just 
do our thing and hopefully reap the benefits of it ourselves. It's always been a chasm of like in this way, you know, where it goes from A to B and there's not really any dialogue in between that A to B. It just goes from here to there, you know, from artist studio that's in the hood or whatever this, that, to Chelsea Gallery, you know, to rich person's home, but not really any stops along the way. So. And I'm, you know, I'm influenced by all of my, also my peers that have really, that I've known for a long time and that are really like, also just becoming such, you know, amazing artists. Whatever you want to do it, it's out there, like, and it's accessible now and you learn every single thing that you can, you know, and just like, devour every piece of information that you can about whatever subject it is that you're interested in. And I think that, you know, I think the, the, the gallery and everything at all, like it looks, it looks sweet and it is sweet and all of that business, but it's also a, an accumulation of, of a lot of different times and skills and learning and shitty jobs and working for other people, but at the same time, listening to every single thing that they say, just and taking whatever information from that resonates with you and continuing on with it and putting it in your Rolodex of information in your head. And, and then all of those accumulative skills and that experience then leads you to be in a position where you are doing something and where you are doing it like in a way that you can say like I'm I know I'm doing this right and I know I'm doing this well you know and that's I think that that's the situation that you want to be in you know is to is to be in that situation but also feel like I know what I'm doing you know and it's just the start so you stay tuned you know so I think that's like my biggest piece of advice to people you know is to really, with, with the internet and all the tools out there, you can really, like, you can go head first into anything that you sort of want to in 2021, you know? So, I think, um, and I think don't, don't be afraid to ask questions, you know? Somebody else knows more than you do, you know, always. The biggest thing that people would say about me is that just, like, that dude doesn't quit, like, and that dude is a horse, you know? and. And I think that New York sort of also though, but New York makes you that, you know, when you survive here and when you sort of grind here un until you have a situation for yourself that is viable and, and you make your own life, you know, here. And so that's, uh, that's sort of the impact that New York has had for me and sort of going through all of those different phases and those different sort of uh, tribulations and whatnot, then you, you're relatable people. You can talk to people. You, you know what people, what's going on with people, what, what's happening with them, because you've been there yourself. So I feel like that's sort of like the great part about the gallery is that like, you know, you can be a billionaire and walk through the door or you can be down on your luck and walk through the door and enjoy it just the same. And we still gonna have a conversation and you still are welcome and all of that, you know? And so I feel like that sort of like my, even my daily situation keeps me quite humble to where I don't have the sort of like, uh, I don't have the advantage or like, I don't have the luxury of like being like too good for anything, you know, in that way. So like, I think that that's my sort of New York thing, you know? At this point, like I am New York, you know, like there's no other sort of, this is what New York is. You come, you come, you build your life and you make it what it is and you do what the fuck you want, how you want to do it. And that's New York. <laughs>